Hello and uh, welcome back to Mario Forever Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Let's go. Ooh, a ghost house. Okay, I can get behind that. But yeah, last episode, you know, I went on tirades about human value and uh, Y2K and internet interactions. Breach. What was... What? What? Oh! Oh. Oh. Okay. Just... It's just a thing. Okay. That's a... That was a power-up, I guess, that I had for a microcosm of a minute. Like a... Like a temporal moment there. What the fuck was that? Oh, yeah, that's one thing I should, like... It's interesting, because there's, like, this whole, like thing at play with the world. I've noticed YouTube algorithm stuff. I'm gonna talk about YouTube algorithm stuff and the YouTube demonetization. That really messed up a lot of people's lives and really ruined YouTube. But what's great is I don't intend to become popular or viewed or pa or like make money off of anything I do. So I can swear as much as I want and just be myself. And I like that. I can just be myself. And I think that is uh I don't know, I think that's something that YouTube's, like, whole demonetization thing is to sanitize people. And ultimately the whole... You uh oh Oh! Uh oh! Oh, no! I was not expecting that. Okay. But the whole, like, it discourages people from being themselves if they're more controversial. Except, you know, if they're a big TV network. You know, or they have funding from mainstream media, of course. Right? Yeah. So I think it's just like, screw over the little guy. You know, screw the little guy. People shouldn't be themselves. So it's like, I don't like that. I think that's just insane to me. But I feel like internet fame and internet stuff, like, I have a lot of perspective on. Because, like, I do have a degree of infamy in small internet communities. And fame. But, like, I'm not going to get into that. It's, uh... I've noticed if you, I've been watching YouTube since its inception. I noticed like people go in and out of style, you know, styles of content, people, personalities, they go in and out of style. And if you cannot adapt to the constant changing landscape, you're just not going to continue to make money. And I feel like there's, some people can make it work. Like I know PewDiePie does a pretty good job. JonTron, I think, does a really good job with it as well. Uh, but it comes to like, this whole thing where people aren't themselves like somebody that didn't like somebody that didn't it didn't work out with somebody was uh justin silverman because you watch i don't know what he's doing now last time i checked he was like part of the avgm podcast but the avgm podcast has been going on and i don't know if there's a controversy or something i don't know and that's the thing but i watched uh justin silverman's old video recently called i hate the n-word nerd and like I was like listening to that and I was like, oh my god, these are like words you cannot, he says there's like multiple words used in that video that just cannot be used in the current YouTube landscape without your video getting nuked. He also did a let's play of a very controversial PC first person shooter, I'm not going to say what it's called because I don't know, I'll bring it, maybe it's like, maybe it's like, I don't know, but it was, I felt that playthrough of his was really funny. And I think there's like a whole meta commentary about like his race and about that and why it, that was funny because of his ethnicity and stuff and his like whole cultural background. So I feel like that added like a little layer of humor, but that's like no longer there. And I get like his other content with like Bob McGran and why he want to take that down. That yeah, that makes sense. I'm not gonna go into like why. You can look that up yourself. It's kind of really messed up. So I can get why not wanting to be associated with that. There's also, you know, deleting it is a thing, but you also kind of, I don't know if he owned up to, like, knowing that guy as a person. I, was he, like, trying to hide or not? And I feel like he was, like, like an organizer for too many games, at least at some point. So I feel like, yeah, I get, like, public image for, like, your career is very important if you're, like, involved in conventions and all that other stuff. So, yeah, and I, that's like, there's this complete insanity in the world. And it's like, I don't know. Like, a lot of people will just, like, say, like, Get back here! Gotcha! Okay. So it's like, it's all very, it's all very interesting. Whoa. Aww. Ah! Oh well. Whatever. Just, just, just whatever, man. Let's just, let's just go. Let's, 
let's just keep up. I'm wasting a lot of time, because I just, like, I'm really into what I'm talking about. And it's just like, yeah, I feel like... And there's, like, the whole thing of, like, walking on eggshells around people. And that's kind of funny, because I'm, like, a person who's in a demographic that's notoriously, like, easy to offend. So, it's really funny when I'm, like, in this demographic, and, like, people are thrown off. Like I said last episode, like, somebody's thrown off that I wasn't offended by being called the F-slur. And it's just like, yeah, whatevs, I don't care. I don't care, I think you're a dummy. A big dumbo. Big dumbo. Dumbo, dumbo, you know. Um, so, it's just like... So, it's like, yeah. So, when I'm not... So I think that just is indicative of my age and the background of, like, the internet and, like, and, like, just how things were when I was younger. It made me, hit, it made me have a thick skin. I just, like, I feel like the internet, like, having a barrier of entry, like, kept really dumb and really easily, like, bothered people out. And there's, like, a whole argument to be made for or against gatekeeping and all this other stuff. You know, I get that. And it's just, like, there's an interesting conversation to have there. But, like, the internet being gatekept, like, and then I noticed when things, like, changed. Uh, this whole paradigm shift happened when I was in high school, in ninth grade. My whole school, even though I went to a private Christian school, me, of all people, private Christian school, I know. <laughs> that school is really crazy. I have lost stories about that. But, uh, and, uh, it was just, like, I remember there was, like, in ninth grade, there was, like, this whole, like, push about cyberbullying on Facebook and everything. I was just like, oh, yeah, that was, like, a thing. And that's when cyberbullying as a concept was put into my mind. And I noticed this paradigm shift where it's like, oh, yeah, these young kids are getting on the internet. And they're very fragile and bad things. And they just, like, and they just, you know, bad things. It's just like, oh. And I sat there and I was like, if you, like, and it's just like things are, like, it's like, that was like a big change in internet culture. I was like, because so all of a sudden after that, it was just like, okay, now we can't be offensive and we can't like be mean and we can't be all this stuff. And there's like, obviously, like, I don't want to be mean and that's not my goal. I feel like being the mean, edgy, like, internet person is kind of like passe. But there was also this thing if somebody was, it wouldn't destroy your life. There's also, like, the whole cyberbullying thing where people would bully someone at school and they would follow them on whole app back home. Because Facebook was really popular back then. And, like, uh, so there was that. But I remember that kind of stuff happened to me because I'm kind of a little F slur, you know? I remember there was, like, this wooden kid in my, like, in my art class. You know, he would, like, he would, like, do that. And then he would, like, on Facebook message me and call me the F slur and all this other stuff. And it's just, like, one day I was, like, you know what? Enough is enough. Uh, hey, hey, Bucko, let's call him Bobby. His name's not Bobby. Let's call you Bobby. Hey, Bobby, let's, let's at recess. You and me, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. He's like, oh, yeah, whatever. And we get into a fight, and I just, like, and it was an interesting fight, because it was, like, we're, you know, like, middle schoolers, so we're not, like, expert martial artists. You know, it wasn't, like, a brawl over the ages. And we also were kind of, like, not, like, really violent, so it's not, like, we broke bones or anything, but there was like a moment where he like right hooks me, right in the face, hits me the cheekbone, I stagger, I fall back, I do not go down. And to put things in perspective, like I was about twice his size, so that's when I didn't go down, it was like, uh oh, I tackle him and just start punching, just punching the living shit out of him. And then he like yells rape and kicks me in the nads and runs away, and it's just like, okay. What's funny is him doing that with social suicide, because his friends who were also into the bullying of me were like, wow, that was really, like, pathetic. And, I, and after that, it was like he just didn't go to school the next day. And he just transferred to another school soon after. And it's like, did I, like, did I, like, defend myself so well that he just humiliated himself and he had to transfer schools? Because that's the thing, is, like, he was, like, an instigator, and I get, like, the whole two wrongs don't make a right thing, but, you know, you gotta stand up for yourself, and I was also part of a generation who, if you were getting bullied, you know, your dad would tell you, like, oh, just, just stand up to him, beat him up, it's like, that's what I did, and that's how it goes, and it's just, like, that's just how it was back then, and I remember, like, soon after, at his new school, he was messaging me on Facebook, 
and you know me, I don't block people on social media, so it's just like, he just messaged me saying, oh, like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 I'm gonna get the football team my new school to beat you up and all this other stuff, I was like, okay, do it! What's stopping you from doing it if you're friends with the football team to the point where they're willing to beat up, like, a completely random person that they don't even know at your beck and call? Then just do it! That's like a thing where it's like, when it comes to, like, internet discourse, it's like, people have even said crazier things on the internet to me as an adult. Like, people have, like, threatened to kill me, which is really funny. Because, like, I know I mentioned before I go to this local anime convention every once in a while, and, like, somebody who had this huge anti-harassment campaign, they, she started this and everything, like, she instigated, like, a bullying campaign where she got just a bunch of brain-dead idiots, like, simps and other people to threaten to kill me and stuff, and if I ever showed up, and I was just like, what are you actually gonna do? It's like, just, if you just... It's like, really? Are you actually going to? I'd like to see you try! It's like the whole thing with, like, the death threats at concerts and all this other stuff. Like, I think, uh, the biggest thing that I remember someone bringing up once about something like that was Marilyn Manson. Like, back when he was controversial, people would threaten to kill him at his concerts, and he would just still, like, you know, the show must go on. So I guess that's, like, the attitude I have. I have that same attitude. So it's just like, whatever, I'm not trying to build myself up. I was like, I'm so tough. I get, like, it's kind of scary, you know? And it's just like, whatever, just do it then. And it's just my passe thing, because I have this disconnection where it's like, oh, people will say stuff on the internet and they'll just bullshit the hell out of the internet. You know, it's like, they don't know me. So it's just like, yeah, I went to that convention, you know, right after, and I was like, yeah, nothing happened. I have like a lot of stories about that convention, cause, but like I, cause like I said, it was semi-controversial. Whoa, 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 okay. But yeah, it's just like, people are dumb, man. People say and do stupid shit, and they're dumb. It's kind of shocking, really. Those will do damage to me? That's not fair. That's not fair. I'm now back, I'm back to Small Mario. He's got Small. I can't twerk with Small Mario. There's no twerking I can do. I'm disappointed! Like Kevin Sorbo, I'm disappointed. That was like the most high skill play I've done this playthrough so far. Admire me for a second. Let's admire my bravery. Stunning and brave, you know? Uh. I didn't fall for that one. Okay. Let's go. This is like nerve wracking. Aha! Oh, oh! Okay, whoever made Mario Forever is just like. really likes putting tricks and traps in your way. Whoever did this is kind of butthead. Like I said, I never played Mario Forever on the PC growing up back when it was more relevant. What I played was Super Mafia Brothers, you know, celebrating the Italian culture. Celebrating my Italian heritage, because I'm Scottish-Italian. Bumpin! So, it's just like, I was celebrating my Italian her cu culture. I played Super Mafia Bros in, like, as an elementary schooler on the internet. <laughs> Maybe elementary school, I'm not sure. I just remember there was a time I got super into, like, ROM hacks, fan games, and all this other stuff. Back when I was, like, pretty young. Probably around 12 or 11. I remember Pokemon... Okay. I know Pokemon ROM hacks nowadays are, like, really big. But Pokemon ROM hacks when I was a kid... Completely different world. We had no Radical Reds, no Inclement Emeralds, no Unbounds. We had Naranja and Quartz. You know, it's like... If you don't know what Naranja and Quartz version of Pokemon are, they're interesting. Naranja, obviously, very Spanish. We got English translation. Okay, the biggest ROM hacking scene for Pokemon back in the day were all... Sp I guess send that castle back to its home galaxy. We're all like... Sp we're all like probably based in Mexico or Spain. Somewhere Spanish was the primary... Was the primary language at play with like ROM hacking stuff. So it was like, you know, uh, Pokemon Quartz, which got an English translation, Pokemon Naranja, which is orange, because it's based off the Orange Islands uh, saga of uh, the anime. And, uh, ah, Lakitu. God. Ah, it's gross. I hate Lakitus. I guess I gotta try. Uh, but yeah, so Pokemon Naranja was really interesting. I had pretty far, and. But it was really weird, because back then also, like, editing ROMs we weren't as knowledgeable of now. So to, like, change the sprites of, like, the Pokemon to orange variants, you had to enter a Game Shark code in your emulator. And 
nowadays we look back on that and that's like barbaric, you know? That's like a barbaric business practice to have. But that was just normal back then. And then let's not even get into Pokemon Courts. If you don't know anything about Pokemon Courts, I highly, highly recommend looking up footage of it or something. Not only is it like pretty much Google Translate into English from Spanish, uh, it has a completely original Pokedex with no old Pokemon, and they're all terrible. Like, not terrible and like... Like, oh, they're, they're terrible in a really amazing way, and I love all of them, and they're precious, and I want to give them a hug. Ah, an auto-scroller. Ah, gross! A Lakitu level and an auto-scroller back-to-back. Ah, yeah, I got a bad, sour, bitter taste in my Not sour, I like sour. Warheads, toxic waste. Yeah, but bitter. Ugh. We're talking, like, peyote bitter, you know? Ugh. Oh, God! That was... That was a genuine, like, I would not expect that. Oh, well. Back what I was saying, uh... What was I saying? Oh. And that's the thing where it comes to, like... I say I like those Pokemon designs, and I say they're bad at the same time. We need to go into my general philosophy of about liking stuff. Because, you know, there's, like, this whole thing of, like, a guilty pleasure. Like, you know, the room... Uh, bad movies like The Room. For me, there's like a lot of guilty pleasure, quote-unquote guilty pleasure anime that I like, like Black Bullet. Black Bullet's a masterpiece, a masterclass of garbage story and comedic timing for dramatic. Uh, there's like a moment, I don't want to spoil it because it's pretty hilarious, but in Black Bullet, there's a lot of tragedy in it, and the tragedy is so, so dramatic. Oh my god. It's so, they lay it on so thick. But there's a moment where something really, really bad happens. But it's presented in a way that almost comes off as like comedic timing. It's almost as if they're portraying a punchline with this tragedy. And it's really weird to describe without spoiling it, but I don't want to spoil it because it's genuinely amazing to watch. And it happens and it's just like, oh, that was really sad, but Holy shit, that's hilarious. And it comes this whole moral dilemma of, like, if you like something that other people don't like, do you have to, like, defend your honor? You know what I mean? It's like, you can like something that other people don't like, you can just genuinely like it, you know? You don't have to, like, oh, I like it, but ironically, you know? I, you know, irony. You know, I can't actually enjoy this, you know? It's really bad and ugly and disgusting. And it's like, eh. I hate that mentality, where it's like, it's kind of like, kind of like, uh, cowardly in a sense, where it's just like, yeah. So I'm trying to work out of the habit recently of just like, ironically liking stuff, where it's like, I don't want to unironic. ah, uh, I gotta remember wherever you're facing determines where the mushrooms, like, slide. So trying to work out that habit of ironically liking stuff, and moving towards, you know, unironically liking stuff. Even if that stuff is like, conventionally considered bad you know so i think that's like that was devious again with these hidden blocks whoa yeah so i feel like that's something we should all work through because i can say like oh sonic and the black knight's a bad game but i really like sonic and the black knight you know i mean it's not great i think sonic, the only really part i'd say about sonic and the black knight that's egregiously terrible is the level at the end of the game with the dragon I feel like that's the only egregiously, like, offensively bad section of the game. You know, but everything else I'd say is pretty darn good. And it's, it's better than Sonic and the Secret Rings. So there's that. So it's like this whole thing where it's like I can enjoy something that other people don't. And that's okay. But we have this thing where we want to fit in. And I get wanting to fit in because my whole, like moral dilemmas about myself are like about fitting in and like i get the desire to but we also got to be ourselves and like what we like and don't be ashamed that you like the things that you like you know that's you know you just gotta appreciate things even the bad things in life and by bad things i mean bad media i can't ninja guide in this can i That'd be cool if I could, like, play Mario, but Ninja Gaiden off walls. 
Yeah, when it comes to liking stuff, you just like what you like, you know? I think there's something to appreciate. Like, I think, like, since one of my favorite games, if not my favorite game, is Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. But I feel like the discourse... Oh, oh god, oh, 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 that was close. I feel like the discourse around that game has changed. I think that's just, like, counterculture. Where it's like, everyone loves Ocarina of Time, so there's a lot of people saying, well, I don't like it. It's just like... So there's, like, some younger people who maybe just don't like it, and that's fine if they don't like it, and it's fine if they like it. You don't have to worry about fitting in with what other people want of you and all these other stuff with games. Like what you like. And now, bad for 20 minutes has passed. My time here today is up. I'll see y'all next time. Same time, same place. Adios.